a description of how you could use a, a PDA. But, you know, it's our first, first uh, example of uh, how, how to actually use a, a PDA in processing. How, how can you actually uh, detect, um, well, recognize a language, detect, uh, accept, or reject uh, strings of a certain kind. Okay, <clears throat> now a note. Um, this is rather important, actually. Uh, so you know, when I ha have an important remark, I tend to put put uh, bars, vertical bars, on the side here to to emphasise their importance. And uh, what you know, the important remark here is that uh, there's a difference in power between a deterministic PDA and a non-deterministic PDA. Now that's different from what we had before with uh, finite automata. A, uh, a deterministic finite automaton, a DFA, and a non-deterministic finite automaton, so an NFA, if you remember earlier, uh, earlier lectures, they, those two were uh, equivalent. Right? They had the same power. They could recognize the same set or class of languages. Okay. Now here, for a PDA, not the same. Okay? Not, not equivalent in power. In fact, uh, a non-deterministic uh, PDA uh, has more power. It can recognize a larger class of languages than can... Oh my god, hold on. <laughs> I'm, uh, I don't think I'm fully awake. I've, <laughs> I've just recognized I haven't fully opened the curtains either. You know, we could have a lot more light. I'll do that just a minute. Is that better? We, we now have twice the area of light coming in. Uh, it just dawned on me as well. Um, I'm by nature. I, I wake up. My brain wakes up more uh, later in the day. So if I'm filming like in the first half of the day, uh, the downside is that I'm not. I'm not going to be as awake, not as sparky, intellectually sparky, as I would be in the second half. Uh, Getting on towards the end of the fifth month, and still differences. Uh, I haven't settled into uh, a, an optimal routine. There's still constant changes going on. Uh, surprising, I didn't expect that. Anyway. Okay, so uh, non deterministic and deterministic PDAs are not equally powerful. The, determinist, the non deterministic PDA can recognize a greater range, a, greater, a larger class of languages than can the deterministic PDA. Right? So that's what it's saying here. And, but it's not proved in the text. Right? It's simply stated, uh, but not proved. So I guess uh, proving that would be. Um, beyond the scope of the text, that, that's my guess, right? but, but, but be conscious of it. So uh, in the case of uh, finite automata, uh, a deterministic and non-deterministic finite automata are equivalent. In the case of PDAs, push down, you know, stack based automata, uh, the deterministic and non-deterministic PDAs are not equivalent. Okay? Because the, the non-deterministic PDAs can recognize more languages than, than the deterministic form. So uh, you know, remember that. Now from now on, uh, in dealing with uh, PDAs, we will deal with uh, non-deterministic. Why? Well, uh, later we will show, uh, next board in fact, we will show that um, non-deterministic PDAs 
uh, equivalent to the grammars, the, the context-free grammars. Right? So that's pretty important. So from now on, we, we won't be dealing uh, with uh, deterministic PDAs for that, for that reason. Now, uh, you know, once, once we've done the formal definition of PDAs, after that, uh, we'll do some examples. Um, in the text, examples 2.16, 2.18, uh, they require non-determinism. Okay. Now, here's a bit of a reminder. I've just said it, but in the case of finite automata, the deterministic and non-deterministic form of the finite automata uh, do recognize the same class of languages. So they're, they're equivalent. In that, you probably remember earlier talking about that, we were a bit surprised, but, but we proved that they were equivalent. But that's not the case with PDAs. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. So now the formal definition of a, a PDA. Now it's similar to what we've already done. You remember the, 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 the five tuple of a finite automat automaton? So it's much, it's much the same, but of course uh, we're now talking about PDAs, pushdowns, so we're talking about stack-based uh, uh, automaton. So, uh, so it's, it's similar to the finite automatonic, you know, except for the stack. So, so we have to add an extra term, um, uh, we have to add uh, other features uh, concerning the stack. Uh, you know, that's just common sense, okay? Now, uh, the, the stack, what is it? Well, it's a kind of memory device, and it's storing what? Well, symbols from, well, symbols, but what kind of symbols? Well, they're symbols from a, often from a different alphabet. Um, you can have input stream symbols, so that, that'll be one alphabet, and you can, you don't have to, you, you could use the same alphabet, but usually you use a different alphabet for the symbols that you push and pop on the stack. So you talk about a stack alphabet. So typically you'll talk two, two different alphabets. The input string alphabet, um, typically represented as capital sigma. Okay? And now this new alphabet uh, that is the stack alphabet, and it's typically represented as capital gamma. Uh, well, you can't see it, but it, 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 it looks like this. Like a upward vertical stroke, horizontal stroke, and a little down stroke. And capital gamma. And that, that's the stack alphabet. Right? And usually the two of them are different. Uh, you may be able to see the top line here. Um, so you know, capital sigma is the input alphabet, you know, the input string alphabet, the, the set of symbols uh, that, that you will see in your input string. And capital gamma here, that's the stack alphabet. So that's the set of uh, symbols that you can push and pop on the stack. 